As part of this topic, let's understand about inner join in Spark. Here are the steps we typically follow for joining data frames. First, we read the data sets from the files into the respective data frames. If there are any requirements related to filtering the data, we take care of the filtering. Then we'll join the data sets using inner join. Once we perform the inner join, we will get the data satisfying the join condition in the form of a new data frame. If we have to join more than two data sets, we'll join two data sets at a time and then we'll join with the rest of the data sets one at a time. For example, if we have to join uh, DF1, DF2 and DF3, first we'll join DF1 and DF2, it will generate a new data frame. Using that new data frame, we'll be joining with uh, DF3. If we have more, then we have to uh, use this uh, intermediate data frame and join with uh, additional data frames one at a time. And finally, we'll get the data frame with all the joins that are supposed to be used as per our logic. Once the data frame with join results is created, we can refer the columns from both the data sets after the join using the original data frame for further processing. Once we go to the example, you'll understand what I'm talking about here. I have already ran this notebook. For this cell, it will take care of creating an object called as Spark. It is after Spark session. Using that, first we are going to set a property called as Spark.SQL.Shuffle.Partitions. Uh, the value is set to 2. The default value for this is 200. We are joining very small datasets. It is not advisable to use 200 for joining small datasets. It can be counterproductive. For that reason, I am setting this property to 2 so that it will not use abnormally high resources to actually take care of joining two small datasets. In this case, we are going to read orders and order items data sets orders is available in this location we have the files in json format as the files are in json format we should be able to use spark.read.json and read the files related to orders in this location into this data frame the advantage of using this uh, location with a json is we don't need to specify the schema as we are dealing with the json data set schema will be automatically inferred by default same is the case with order items the location for order items is here it contains JSON files. As it contains JSON files, we are using spark.read.json to read JSON files in this location into this data frame called as order items. You should be able to print the schema for both orders and order items. You can review the output here. Orders have customer ID, date, ID, and status. Order items have ID, order ID, product ID, product price, quantity, subtotal. In this case, the common field between these two data frames are nothing but order ID in orders and order item order ID in order items. Don't use order item ID in order items to join with orders using order ID. Order item ID is unique for order items. Uh, the foreign key with respect to order items to orders is order item order ID. Now we should be able to join orders and order items based upon the common key. In this case, we are not going to filter anything. We will just perform the join between the two and we will see the details. In orders, it is known as order ID. And in order items, it is known as order item order ID. So order ID and order item order ID uh, is the common key between the two data frames or data sets. If you want to look at the help of uh, join, you can use help function like this. It takes three arguments. It is typically invoked using uh, one of the data frames. As part of first argument, we have to pass the second data frame. And then we can actually specify the join condition. And also we can specify how we, we want to join, whether we want to join using inner or outer, if it is outer, if you wanted to use left outer or right outer or full, so on and so forth. There are different types of joins which can be passed here. The default is inner. If you don't pass the third argument, it will perform using inner join. The condition has to be second argument or you can also use keyword on to actually pass the join condition. So using this syntax, we should be able to join orders and order items. It will look like this. The new data frame name is nothing but orders underscore join. The logic to generate this data frame is nothing but orders, which is the first data frame dot join. Then the second data frame is the first argument to this. Then we have the join condition. This will take care of uh, joining the two data frames and create the data frame orders underscore join. You can also specify using the keyword argument on like this to take care of uh, passing the join condition. You can also specify how and uh, pass inner like this. However, it is default and it is not required if you want to perform inner join. When it comes to join condition, either you can specify the columns like this, where we have referred using data frame name dot column name, or you can specify the columns like this. Here, we have specified data frame name in square brackets in single quotes, we have specified the column name. If the column names are not same, we can even directly pass the column names like this. Even this one uh, will work. We just have to import call function and then we can actually say order id like this then you can actually say call off order item order id like this 
even this one will work uh, as per our expectation in many cases uh, the call names will be same between the two data frames if the call names are same between the uh, two data frames using which we want to join then you will not be able to use this approach i would highly recommend either to use this approach or this approach to specify the join condition rather than using the call function and passing the column names now you should be able to see the schema details here if you look at the schema on this data frame called as orders underscore join you can uh, use this after any of these cells and you should be able to see the output like this we have order customer id date id status from orders then rest of the fields from order items using the field names i am able to determine from which data frame these fields are coming from you can also preview the data by using show like this and also you can get the count so with respect to orders we have 68883 with respect to order items we have 172198 the join results is nothing but 172198 however each record will contain uh, the data from both orders and order items based upon the uh, satisfied join condition if you look at this the count with respect to order items and orders join is same because for each and every record in order items we have a parent record in orders and we do not have any null values as part of order item already that's why the counts are matching here now let's perform another task with respect to joining the data sets in this case it is related to projection the task is nothing but project all the fields from orders and then order item subtotal from order items so instead of getting all the fields from both orders and order items in this case we are expecting to get only the fields related to orders and then only order item subtotal from order items if you want to get only the fields related to orders after join you can actually say select off then orders of star like this it will take care of uh, getting the fields from orders if you want to get order items of total from order items uh, on top of orders columns this is how you you should be able to specify the order items of total you can see the output here we got order customer id order date order id and order status from orders and then order items of total from order items let's go through another task which we have performed on top of joined uh, data frame in this case we want to project order id order date order status from orders and order items of total from order items we want to project a subset of columns from both orders and order items once the data is joined we should be able to project uh, either by using a dot notation like this using the data frame name and then column name or using the square brackets like this both of them will return the same output you can review the output and confirm this is how you should be able to perform the join and then project the data beyond join we will also see how to perform uh, transformations such as aggregation sorting etc on top of join results as part of subsequent topics for now just focus on uh, inner join and projection of the data